uh, EJ Barthel, new running backs coach, or I backs coach, however you see fit. Uh, but uh, just really excited to be here, thankful, grateful for the opportunity uh, Coach Rule um, has provided uh, me and to come here uh, and join the staff. And just you know, it's been nothing but um, a great experience thus far, and looking forward to getting to work when the guys get back here pretty soon. Right. So. Steve Sippel on Husker Online. So you come in, you start looking at your room, you start looking at video, I assume. What's, it, what's your first impression of the group you have in running back? You know, overall impressed, uh, truthfully. You know, I thought, you know, after, after evaluating the tape and looking at some of the guys on, in the roster, um, familiar with some of them uh, at other places, uh, you know, at Ramirez, at, at a high school. We got similar tracks. I coached at Bergen Catholic High School, so I'm I'm familiar with uh, Ramirez and uh, just really excited about the group. You know, a lot of potential out there, um, and, and how they run the football. And, and I, you know, I, you know, I'm excited to work with the whole group. I really am. Hey, Coach Greg Smith inside of Nebraska. You know, a lot of this part part of town is about recruiting um, outside of the program. But how important was it to you to be able to recruit your own room during this time? Uh, well, I tell you. You're saying as far as recruiting just running backs? Recruit those guys that are already there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a new experience, right? I think with, with the transfer portal and all this stuff and, and with going on with, with uh, uh, guys going different programs uh, for various different reasons. Um, it wasn't a whole lot of recruiting, to be honest. It was more so of uh, getting down to the first order of business when I got here was from Coach Rule and it was, was to, to get with those guys and make sure that uh, we put a face on a face and, 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 and get my own impression of who they are after I've already w watched the tape and things of that nature. But um, just really excited about every single one of the kids. I had great conversations with them. And, and, you know, in my room, it's, you know, we're people. You know, it's, it's obviously I'm their coach but, and their players, but we're people. You know what I mean? And, and that communication part is really important to me. And uh, I was really, you know, really comfortable with, with everybody in the group. Coach Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Uh, that experience you had at UConn, what did you gain from that? Have you guys walked into a situation where they're one of the only programs I think, that canceled their season with some That's right. independent school, yeah. and you guys got them a bowl game? This, I mean, how, how rewarding was this past year? What did you gain just kind of luring from that experience this last year? You know, first, I'd like to thank Jim Mora for, for him uh, bringing me there. I thought that, um, you know, uh, was 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 a uh, was a great opportunity uh, that I saw, and when, and when he entrusted in me to 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 help lead that charge, it was it was you know, I was couldn't have been more excited to be there. And Jim Jim is great. Um, so and with that being said, I thought that um, the challenge was definitely there. You know what I mean? As far as a lot of the players there have not played before, um, and so we had a lot of first timers on that field. Uh, uh, some incoming freshmen, some guys around the roster that didn't really play. So really, it was kind of like I was coaching freshmen. You know what I mean? So and. Um, but the kids really bought in, and I'm very thankful for each and every one of those kids in that group. And you know, I think I cried about three days <laughs> uh, in the transition process because how much uh, of a connection we had with those guys and how hard they played and practiced for me. Um, you know, that, that if you watch any of the UConn games last year, uh, the one thing I hope you were able to see was the effort out of that running back unit and how they ran the football and how much pride they took each rep. I get choked up just talking about it. Um, Great kids, you know they're they're great kids, and uh, I, I appreciate those guys. And uh, you know they'll they'll be special. You know all, all the guys I've coached, they'll be special to me from uh, for the rest of my career. Hey, EJ, yeah. that good chairman from the athletic uh, coach that field last week, kind of struck a nerve with people when talking about the fullback up here. I know you had a guy, Robert Burns, uh, That's right. at UConn just last year, who That's played right. a lot of roles for you. Can you explain what he did in that offense and how it might translate to Nebraska? <laughs> Well, I played fullback, so you know I usually know what they look like when I see them. And uh, you know when I saw Robert Burns, I, I initially I thought you know that, that's what a fullback looks like, and he, and he played he played tailback, and and that was a huge challenge for him in the spring to train, change positions, and do things and that he's never done before. And I thought that he accepted that challenge and exceeded my expectations. Um, I you know I'm biased. I thought he was one of the best bat fullbacks in the country last year, and uh, you know I just, you know. And I know Coach Satterfield and Coach Coach Rule are excited about having a fullback here, and I got a chance to work with uh, Alex Arma at Carolina Panthers and, and Gio Ricci and those guys. And uh, so you know, and I played fullback. You know what I mean? And, and and I'm excited to get my hands on one for sure. Absolutely. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Why did you uh, want to follow Matt Rule here in Nebraska? What do you what do you like about him as a coach? 
you know, funny story. The first time I worked with Matt Rule, I got hired at Temple, and you know, something hit my brain. Um, one of the first times we hit the field, um, very similar weather conditions as far as cold. And you know, as a player, you know, indoor, you have an indoor facility, an outdoor facility, and even as me as a player, whenever someone announced, "Hey, we're we're indoors today," yeah, hey, we're out, we're outdoors. Ah, oh. you know, something hit me when he said we're going to hit in the field. And because the weather, weather was really cold, not one kid said, said anything. Not one guy made a, made a, made a noise or a grunt. And that moment um, when I was on that staff, that moment I knew that the culture that he developed at that place was pretty special. So um, I'm a believer in, in, in Coach Rule and, and, and what he stands for. In fact, I have, um, I'm, in, I'm in alignment with the standards of uh, what he represents as far as development and process. And I think that... Um, it, it applies to life and it applies to football. And, you know, if, if Coach Rule ever calls me, uh, I'm going to pick up and uh, I would love to be part of whatever he's got going on because I, I truly believe in his process. Obviously, we all grow and change, right, in the, in the decade or so that you've been with him. How has he maybe changed since he was back then versus who he is today in 2023? Well, I think we've all changed. Our, our experience in the NFL, uh, I think that's a little different when you're coaching uh, pros versus college guys. Um, and, you know, it's m my personal experience of, of, you know, the difference, the thing I noticed that in the NFL is the guys that we had to coach, um, they, you know, they don't have to listen to us. Does that make sense? Like yeah. in college, there's more of a, you know, they don't have to, but there's more of a, a need that there's, there's a lot of talent in the NFL and you have to really have to bring some value to get their attention and, and, to have, and the, for them to want to take your coaching. It's not about just, hey, I say you do. It's more so about how can you help me get better? And, uh, and I think that was a huge change, and I see that in Coach Rule as well, that um, there's a lot of guys uh, out there that, that, that need net development physically and mentally. And in the NFL, uh, we were able to tap into some of that with some of those guys, and that was the biggest thing I noticed with myself and others on, on staff and Coach Rule. Yeah. Coach Steve Mark with Inside Nebraska, when you're talking running backs, what specific traits do you really look for and really kind of value? I think it's a mentality. You know, I really, I really do. I think it starts with, with that. I think the running back to me is, is, you know, is the ultimate team player. You know, I think that um, for us, we need to be able to run the football and, and, and protect in pass protection and then block um, uh, in, in the run game and, and be vital members of special teams. So um, the ultimate team player in my mind. Uh, and what I look for most in backs is their will and their mentality to, 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 to not get tackled. Right? And, and, and to run with a sense of, uh, of violence um, um, upon contact, right? To me, that's, that's the biggest thing um, that I'm looking for in guys. I want to make sure that we're striving to finish every single run. Um, I think in the run game in college football and, and football in period, when you're able to run the ball effectively, I think you have a sh shot to win, win the game. I think you take the soul out of the defense when you're able to do that, dominate the line of scrimmage, which will be one of our uh, you know, uh, principles here. Um, so when you can do that, uh, I think that's a mindset thing more than a physical thing. You got to uh, want to do to be that way. So that's the number one trait I'm looking for. And ultimately, athleticism. You know what I mean? And, and you have to have a certain measurable and a certain speed uh, to play at this level. Um, but you know, my job is to coach that, coach their eyes, and, and help them understand where the ball is supposed to go and how to run the ball when they get there. Um, you know, and that's the biggest thing. EJ Kevin, Hoops with Channel 10 here in town. Uh, what was your knowledge of Nebraska football prior to taking the job, and how familiar are you with the program? Well, I mean, to me, it's it's the original RBU, right? Yeah, that's that's the reality of, of the, as a running back coach taking this job. I mean, this is one of the best jobs in the country. Um, you know, the the tradition that's built here on running the football. I mean, I'm honored, honestly, honor, honored to. to to be the guy that's a part of that uh, that room and, and help lead those guys, because I know how important it is to this fan base um, that we run the ball effectively. And uh, you know, this is one of those jobs where it, 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 you get the chills thinking about game day. And uh, you, know, you know, that's you know, that's that, that's you know, Rozier, Ro Ro Roger Craig. I mean, come on, Mont Green. Those guys are those guys are legends. You know what I mean? So it's like. You know, to, to be part of that group in some way, some form. I worked with Amir Abdullah. You know, I mean, just to be part of that 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 that, that special group now is pretty special to me. Hey, coach, um, Aaron Sorensen with Hill Varsity. So familiarity with Nebraska because you've coached in the Big Ten. Right. So, how has maybe the Big Ten changed in your experience from both the player and then into coaching with the run game, or maybe how has 
same? How do you see Nebraska kind of fitting into the Big Ten in the future? <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. One comment that hits my brain as you ask me that is the, the culture here and the tradition in the Big Ten. Uh, funny story, my first time coaching here in the, in the game, I got in the elevator. Is was, was a very nice elderly woman. And as I was going to the press box, and she said, uh, oh, it's very nice to meet you. And she was thankful I held the door. And then uh, her next comment was, um, we're, I'm glad you're in the conference because we need more wins. <laughs> and I was just quite, like, I was so caught off guard. Uh, you know, like, did you just really do that? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I'm very aware of the tradition. And I'm very aware of, uh, of the pride that comes with this conference. And um, the weather plays a, a huge, a huge factor. And, and there's a there's a certain style of of, of run uh, of uh, of the run game in, in the Big Ten, and so um, yeah, I mean, having familiar familiar familiarity with it, uh, being in the Big Ten before, I'm really excited to kind of do it again. DJ, with your experience in, in uh, the Northeast and, and New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and seeing what what Coach Rule and the staff was able to do in a short period of time in, in that area, what kind of potential and opportunity do you think exists moving ahead in future classes to? to Well, I think, you know, I think, you know, being at in the middle of the country uh, gives us opportunities to, to really be elite in the recruiting uh, world. We can put our hands on pretty much every part of the country and, and traditionally tap into those, those original resources that, that Nebraska is familiar with, you know, the West Coast and Texas and in the Northeast. And obviously, uh, me being from a North, the Northeast, and there's a lot of pride in Nebraska uh, when, when there was New Jersey, New York City. Uh, PA kids coming here on, on a regular basis. So that, to me, I look at that as a challenge. I think that's a challenge I need to, uh, to really um, work my tail off and, and create that pipeline to help Coach Rule and, 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 uh, and, and the university bring that pipeline back. And that's, that's, that's going to be important for sure. Hey, Coach, uh, Brian Christopherson from Husker 24-7. When did you first, uh, when did Quinton first pop on your radar? <laughs> and just how you enjoyed watching him develop and, and what you liked about him? Well, I tell you, it's, it goes kind of goes back to Coach Rule a little bit. Um, you know, I, when I was at Temple, I got a chance to work under uh, the late uh, George DeLeon. And um, the one thing, as, as a young coach, uh, I had to drive him around in recruiting. And I really had to learn, learn how to recruit from, from George. And, and, and Coach DeLeon would, would, would make an emphasis on, you know, you make sure you, you cover the ground, cover your territory. You, you give every high school coach their respect when they recommend a player. That's something that stuck with me my whole career, and that's how it happened. You know, uh, had a great relationship with the high school coach, and he had reached out to me and, and, and said I need to keep my eyes on this guy. And I've recruited that school before. I had a, you know, and, and when he says something, I'm going to look at it. And he was ex absolutely right. Um, and you know, I think the kid fell on the radar. And fortunate enough, fortunate for us, I mean, he's he's ours. And I couldn't be more excited about him. I think he just scored a thousand points in basketball the other night, and uh, he's a heck of an athlete. And uh, the sky's the limit for a kid like that. White said last week, you got to recruit on this staff. What's the energy been like that you've seen just with the guys you're familiar with, guys who are new as far as the recruiting in this first month even? Yeah, you know, the guys in our, you know, I've just working with our guys before, um, they love recruiting. You know, everyone on our staff, they, they take pride in it. And it's it's competitive amongst us. And I think that um, you know, it ha helps filter um, the process along. And it's a positive competition between us we're helping to push each other and strive to find the very best players we can we can do uh, we can find and uh, so that element of, of uh, uh, amongst our staff is pretty uh, is, is a tool in my, in my my in my opinion and from the outside looking in you know being on the staff of Penn State staff in 2016 when they win a big Ten title looks pretty like a pretty cool job even if you're not coaching on the field but you leave there to become a position coach at the FCS level and I was thinking about how Matt rule would say he said in a speech one time, like, if you want to be a coach, you need to go somewhere a coach and not just be, you know, a personnel person. Why did you decide to leave there? And what value did you get out of those three jobs, like, right in a row that you took um, after you left Penn State? Well, it's funny. You say, so when that did happen, you know, uh, when I started this, uh, my career, I, I wanted and envisioned myself always being a head coach at some point. And then I was very clear with, with Coach Rule on my, on, my, on my goals. But I wanted to learn the uh, – the whole process of evaluation and recruiting and how it works from top to, to bottom, and Coach Rule is someone that you know that I really uh, you know even when I'm not under his leadership, I'm still a guy that I'm still going to reach out to and ask for his advice. And when I did make that decision, um, you know it was really simple. It was a one minute, two minute conversation. I said, Coach, I got a couple of opportunities uh, to stay at at, at uh, uh, Penn State, and I had also had some opportunities at some other places that were 
reaching out and, uh, and he asked me simple as, you want to coach? And I said, y you're darn right. And he said, well, go coach. <laughs> and it was that simple. I heard, it, I heard loud and clear what he was telling me to do. And, and uh, that was all I really needed to push me over the edge to make sure that uh, I chased my, my dream and, and, and uh, get after it. Uh, well, you know what? His energy. You know, uh, you know whether he's uh, evaluating players or he's coaching. You're always going to feel him. That's you know that's 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 cool. You know, I mean, he does a great job with the evaluation. I think he's one of the best evaluation evaluators in the country, and uh, yeah, he takes pride in it. And he takes pride in his coaching the same way. You know, you're going to you're going to feel him at practice. You're going the kids are going to feel him. And uh, you know, if you're there at practice, you're going to feel him. You're going to feel his voice, and uh, he runs around. And he's, he's an energetic person, and uh, he pushes pushes guys like myself to to want to be better for sure. So I really appreciate that. PJ, uh, same question about Pierre McGuire. Not a lot of guys his age running around as full-time position coaches uh, at the Power Five level. What, what have you observed about him, and what do you look forward to in working with him on the offensive side? Of I mean, it's, it's it's only natural to look at his age and say, you know, oh, he's a young guy. But however, you watch him coach uh, DJ Moore and and Robbie Anderson, and uh, I think those guys are pretty impressive players, and and uh, he's able to do that. So you know, I think that. He's going to do a great job, and, and, and he's he, he's uh, he's one of us, you know what I mean? And, and he, he takes pride in the coach, and he's not afraid to uh, coach guys the, the right way, but the hard way is right, and, and, and having tough conversations and getting guys where they need to be. So, and, and another guy that's also going to bring a lot of energy, um, and he's probably more, you know, he's got he's in more shape than most of us. So, you know, it's going to be fun to uh, uh, try to keep up with him as well. How much have you been able to watch Anthony Grant and kind of what he did last year? That's right. And Ramir the year before was he had a pretty and yeah. Even, I guess you could say was the starter before he got hurt. For sure. And and uh, and um, you know I watched them it's a lot of his spring stuff as well. Um, you know I love it. I, I think A A G has I call him A G. I think everyone calls him A G. A G. He uh, his sky's the limit for the kid. The kid's got you know really good potential. He's got a chance to to be pretty special. Um, he's a very powerful runner, and um, AJ Allen is as dynamic as they get. He's got the ability to kind of do it all in the run game. Ramirez got elite speed, and um, he's got the ability to you know, make defenders miss in open in open space. Emmett is uh, is, is going to be high effort, a high effort, versatile guy. That's you know I, I, he doesn't have a lot of playing experience, but just watching his spring practice, seeing him do multiple things on special teams, and seeing his effort. Um, so he's going to have you know a lot of versatility it brings to the room and. Um, um, I'm missing, and, and Gabe Irvin, I mean, golly, you look at that kid, you walk in any high school in the country, you look at Gabe Irvin, you say, who, who is this guy? You know what I mean? And, and so, you know, uh, the transfer portal for me wasn't really something I was really interested into. Um, well, I would say Coach Rule wasn't interested into. Uh, and, and, and so for us, I'm really excited to work with that group because I think I got a pretty special one. EJ, Zach Carpenter with Inside Nebraska, you talked about the competition within the staff and recruiting. Is there any examples you can share with us to sort of uh, – Feel back the curtain behind some of that competition? No, I, you know, I, it, there's nothing really that's that that's that's uh, that, that jumps out like. But it's just the it's just the 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 culture amongst us uh, to make sure we push each other to, to to do the very best. And everyone has an opinion, everyone has a voice, and it's it's good to hear other guys' opinions, are, and maybe they'll see something that you may not see, and or and vice versa. So I think it's a healthy uh, way to, to to work amongst each other and. Uh, it goes back to everything we do in our culture. I mean, the biggest thing for us is, you know, we're, we're people uh, coaching people, and the number one thing is communication and being able to communicate, whether whether it's easy conversations or tough conversations, and that goes right into coaching. You know what I mean? I think that's that's the reality, and, and uh, we're going to do a great job pushing each other's staff, and we're going to do a great job pushing these players. And, uh, you know, I just really can't wait to get to work because I'm really excited for sure.